Hi, I'm Chip, CTO of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Recently, we've been spending a lot of time as a community talking about lots of really interesting projects that are integrating Kubernetes into the Cloud Foundry family of open source efforts. And so today I wanted to help clarify how three of them work. So the first project is the Cloud Foundry Container Runtime. This is a project that Pivotal and Google started initially together. They called it Kubo back then. VMware quickly got involved, and since then it joined the Cloud Foundry Foundation as a incubating project. The whole goal of the Cloud Foundry Container Runtime is to make deploying, managing, and upgrading Kubernetes easy on any cloud. It does that by using Cloud Foundry Bosch in order to deploy onto virtually any infrastructure. Bosch has the ability to communicate with public clouds, private infrastructure environments, virtualization platforms, open source infrastructure as a service systems. And it can ask for whatever it needs in terms of virtual machines, the storage necessary to support them, the networking configuration. And so the Bosch director is able to ask this infrastructure or these clouds for as many virtual machines as it needs. It installs a small agent on each one of those machines. And that agent lets it give that machine jobs to do. So for example, the Bosch director to the make Kubernetes work will deploy the etcd cluster, the Kubernetes master nodes, and then the rest of the pool of nodes that are going to host the containers that Kubernetes is responsible for scheduling. The other thing that's very important about this dual scheduling layer, where Kubernetes is responsible for scheduling containers, and Bosch is responsible for scheduling jobs onto virtual machines, which is in fact Kubernetes nodes, is that what happens when a node disappears? Well, Kubernetes will read distribute all of the containers that it's responsible for. But with the Cloud Foundry container runtime, Bosch is able to ask the infrastructure for a new VM and rejoin it to the cluster, adding the capacity that was lost back. It also can take advantage of the logic that Bosch is able to achieve for zero downtime upgrades uh, or rolling upgrades of the Kubernetes platform within the public clouds. All right, next up, CF containerization. In a very, very simplistic way of looking at it is going from the release manifests that are typically used by Bosch to deploy software into Docker images and Helm charts for deployment into Kubernetes. It does that by using a process called Fizzle. And this Fizzle code base is what takes this Bosch release manifest, creates a Docker image, runs the same logic that Bosch would typically run within a virtual machine to pull in the software that needs to be packaged and then it puts it together using a Helm chart that is then used to deploy Kubernetes. Now what's important about the CF containerization effort is that while that's a general purpose idea, it's specifically trying to get the Cloud Foundry application runtime. It's the traditional platform as a service that everybody thinks of when you think of Cloud Foundry. It's trying to package that whole system into Docker images using Helm charts to deploy it on top of a Kubernetes cluster. All right, now the third project, this one's called Arini. And this is when we tear inside the Cloud Foundry application runtime. Again, that, that PaaS part of the Cloud Foundry technology stack. And so inside that PaaS part of the Cloud Foundry stack, we have lots of different smaller projects. We have the Cloud Controller API, or the CAPI project. We have routing, which is how end users talk to applications deployed in the CF environment. We have identity management through UAA, logging, and all of the other projects that make that Cloud Foundry app runtime project work. Now, what the Arini project is focused on doing is providing an option for the Diego container scheduler. A Diego container scheduler is one that was built by our community. It's purpose-built to support the app runtime. But Kubernetes has reached the point of maturity where there are some use cases that it can solve. And Arini is all about giving us choice between Diego and Kubernetes as the underlying infrastructure that the app containers are run on. So those are the three projects that I wanted to share with you. They actually seem like they all do the same thing or do similar things when you hear about them initially, right? It's Kubernetes and the Cloud Foundry communities coming together. But as you can see, there are different ways that Kubernetes can be integrated into the Cloud Foundry technology stack. And each one has a different potential use case. But what's more interesting is the potential combination of these as our ecosystem, the end users, the customers, and importantly, the vendors, look at the different ways they want to use these technologies, they may find that a combination of all three will be very interesting. So I can imagine using the Cloud Foundry container runtime process 
as a way to deploy and manage Kubernetes, with Bosch taking responsibility for working with the underlying clouds. We could then further imagine that we're using CF containerization to take just the part of the application runtime that's needed to create the developer experience, package it into Docker images, including a Helm chart for deployment, and push it on top of that same Kubernetes cluster that the container runtime project deployed for us. So the combination of CF containerization and Arini collapses the Cloud Foundry application runtime into a Kubernetes integrated developer experience. And we use the power of Bosch to deploy that Kubernetes cluster onto any cloud or any infrastructure.